Kavanaugh with HIVHero.org and HeroNews.org. I'm here with my new friend, actually, amazing guy, Chris Messina. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I am doing fantastic. And you have a new addition to your family. Let's see him. This is Freddie. This is his... Give him a close-up. What was the hardest part about really breaking into the business? How did you do it? The hardest part? I didn't really find that, to me, it was difficult to break in because I just kept seeking out what I love to do. So whatever, I mean, I worked in costumes and wigs. I worked at the Gateway Playhouse on Long Island, um, taught myself to be a costume person and taught myself to be a wig master. I wanted to work in all aspects. So I started just feeling things out and I love to perform on top of it. So um, I just kind of started working my way into that world and... It, I just loved it all, so I just kind of things kind of started falling into my lap because I had a lot of passion for it, and I find everything you have passion for in your life kind of comes your way if you know have good karma and you love it enough. Well, that's a very good lesson. So you got to be in it to win it. Well, you certainly have found enough shows. You've been in quite a bit, from Hairspray to Tarzan to Legally Blonde. Uh, what's been your favorite role so far? Uh, Taking away Jersey Boys. Taking away Jersey Boys. Um, my favorite role, I think, I really loved playing Turk in Tarzan because it was very athletic. Um, we did, I did it at North Shore, and it's in the round, and we had these huge, uh, like nets above the stage, so we everything was free. Was, was whole, we held ourselves. We had, we weren't rigged up at all. So I was singing upside down on a rope hanging with my you know with my own hand and singing this all these songs and jumping all over these nets and you know and doing flips and flipping off the net and singing and it was just really cool to be able to do all of that Feels good with the eyes and the tender persuasion i feel a duty to help you through and though i still can see the attraction who better than me nobody but you So let's talk now about Jersey Boys. A uh, pretty amazing journey you have with them. Can you tell us how this all happened? Oi, um, Jersey Boys. Um, I started in it. I started uh, the second national tour in 2011. I took out the company. We um, we built the whole company, and it took about two months. The audition process was. I was actually doing Legally Blonde at the time, and I got. I came down to New York in the mid, like on a day off. It was actually during, I believe, Hurricane Irene. We had to make it back for my callback, and me and one other guy who actually also got the show came down from Legally Blonde at a gunquit, and we um, we drove down and through Hurricane Irene, and we were the only people on the road in this little rental car, <laughs> and we were getting literally the car was getting blown back and forth, and and we got finally made it back to New York and. We did the audition for, you know, Bob Gaudio, Frankie Valli. Everybody, I mean, everybody was there, a huge table of people. And, um, and I got it, and it was my, you know, the biggest job I've ever had. Um, and it created an incredible change of career, change of life, change of um, self for me, um, a huge growing experience. Right. And then you translated that experience into Broadway. What happened on Broadway? Um, so my Broadway debut, uh, so I did the tour for a year and a half, and then um, I took a break from that, and I went to go to a, uh, the Muni to do, I believe it was Spamalot, I think it was, um, and I was on my flight to Spamalot. As it was taking off, I pass out on flights, out cold. So the second we start pulling away, I'm out cold. So I forgot to turn my phone off. So I wake up, and we had just taken off, and I'm you know, scrambling to get my phone in airplane mode. And it, uh, I have a text from our, my associate director, Richard Hester, asking me to come play Joe Pesci on Broadway for two weeks because some guy was sick. So I freaked out, got on the internet, and I landed in St. Louis, uh, looked at the board. They, the company flew me right back. And I made my Broadway debut on June 7th, which is my birthday, my 28th birthday. Um, in uh, in Jersey Boys on Broadway, and the Muni was so 
so wonderful and they were so understanding and they just, you know, they didn't fully supportive of me leaving and it was an incredible experience. Well, that's your probably debut. Absolutely. Um, and then what happened after that? Because you, you were understudying the Frankie Valley role and you actually were able to go on. Yeah. I, um, so I left, so I did that for only two weeks and then, um, about a year later, they, the guy that I had gone into cover, he left the show. Um, and he, I replaced him for good, and I basically was in the company for the last three years of the run, and I got to close the company on Broadway. Um, I understudied Frankie Valley, and um, which I also did on the tour. And by the end, um, I actually got to play Frankie as one of the closing Frankies. I was the second to last Frankie on Broadway, um, and again, one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Um, lear just learning to accomplish that role successfully and Frankie sings 27 songs in the show right. and um, goes through a very very wide range of age from I think around fif uh, 15 to m mid to late 60s by the end of the show put your loving hand out baby I'm Uh, but you've had these amazing opportunities to sing at other events, including the Yankee Stadium event for the NHL. What was that like? Um, that was incredible. Um, I, I sang at Yankee Stadium for about 60,000 people in nine-degree weather um, with the boys. And we were it was the NHL Winter Classics. And it was so awesome. I've never in my life looked out and seen a stadium like that full of people. It felt like, you know, you're, you feel like Bon Jovi or something. You know? An empty shell that used to be The shadow of my life is hanging over me A broken man without a goal Don't even stand the devil chance to win my soul Begging, begging you Put your loving hand out, baby Begging um, And then... And then I also got to sing that same, like, a week later at the Super Bowl that happened at MetLife, MetLife Stadium. And we did the tailgate party for, like, 13,000 people. Um, and then just this past, uh, as the show was closing, we sang on the Wendy Williams show, which was also so fun. And the Giants game, which was for, at MetLife, which was on, in the middle, of this, uh, the middle of the field for 80,000 people sold out. We had our own box. It was awesome. It was, they treated us like royalty. It was so cool. What advice would you give to people trying to get into business? Besides? I would say to really, A, make sure you love it. Make sure that it's, you can't imagine yourself doing anything else. Because um, talent is wonderful. But there's also something to be said for your work ethic and, and what you expect in life. And, and you're just, as a person, and how easy you are to work with, like you said. And um, if you have too much at stake... During the whole process, you're, it's not fun anymore. And if you're not having fun, it's not worth it. Because it's not an easy job. And you go from making a whole lot of money to nothing. And then all of a sudden you're on unemployment when your show closes. Even a show that ran for 12 years on Broadway. You know, and it's, it's not an easy career, but it, you, you got to love it. So, Chris, as you know, we're a site for newly diagnosed and people living with HIV. But our first message is prevention. Why do you think it's so important to practice safe sex practices in these days? Um, just, I mean, for me personally, I think it's, I mean, maybe it's not what most people would say, but I, I think integrity-wise for myself. And you are on prep. What made you decide to get on prep? I guess it was numerous things. I mean, I feel a little bit like it's a responsibility of the gay community to help, to help get this this um, disease out of our world. But looking back on what our community has been through with this, um, it's worth it to me to help be part of eliminating it. So Chris, I want to thank you so much for being our Broadway Hero of the Month for February. It's the month of love and you're very dreamy, so we got the perfect person to represent this month. Thank you for bringing Freddie. He's adorable. 
And I think you're going to be very successful. You're a young guy. You've got a lot ahead of you, and your career is just going to go up and up because you're just a great person to work with and very, very talented and a new friend. So thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. This is Mike Kavanaugh from HIVHero.org and HeroNews.org. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, HeroNews.org, right here. Also, we are a 5013C charity. HIV Experience Resources Organization, or HERO, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at our website, www.hivhero.org. Thank you so much.